Who's done more traveling than Pitbull, taken out more women than Andrew Tate, and has more disguises than Johnny Sins? That's right, Hitman's back. So today we're going to be looking at his best assassinations so far, breaking down the injuries in a little bit more detail. So if you're ready, I'm Dr. Maddie. let's begin. <laughs> okay, so it looks like he's playing with a charge on the defibrillator. <laughs> setting it up. Oh god, okay. <laughs> so a defibrillator has a max charge of 360 joules. But to be honest, nowadays most defibrillators in public are automatic defibrillators, so they do all the work for you. They detect the rhythm of the heart and they give an electric shock appropriate to the rhythm it detects, taking away any human error. Still, you wouldn't want to be in contact with the person you're giving the shock to because there's a chance of it being transmitted to your body and you may end up on the table with them. <laughs> okay, stashing a body. And what's this, a heart in an incubator? And uh, what's he going to do with that? A spare heart, he's gone. Oh, okay. <laughs> Straight into the bin. Oh, what a waste. I mean, the organ transplant register already has a long enough waiting list. We can't have Hitman just chucking good ones in the bin. I need to look at one Whilst on the topic, if you're interested in being an organ or blood donor, I'll leave some information down in the description. Okay, so it looks like he's taken over the uh, surgical equipment and selective extraction. Oh god, he's taken something out the right side of his chest there. Now, don't forget that your heart's on the left side of the chest, so that's pretty safe in this instance. But puncturing the lung this way could lead to a pneumothorax where the lung collapses, and it can be lethal. Funnily enough, the way we actually treat a pneumothorax is by placing a needle into the chest to allow the lungs to reinflate. It just doesn't look this brutal. Hmm, okay. Okay, poisonous stem cells. Oh god, look, his body's all contracting up and he's... Oh, he's foaming at the mouth. Goodness me. Now, when people get a stem cell injection, it's normally through a large vein in the arm. And if the liquid is laced with a poison, for example, like cyanide, this could account for your body contracting up and you foaming at the mouth. The fact that the poison would be in the bloodstream would mean that it would get to work far quicker than the conventional tablet that you'd hear spies having hidden in their teeth. Okay, he's tampering with the computer that controls the surgical uh, equipment. Oh god, and he's turned it into a homicidal maniac. Oh, and he's bled out to death there. Now, some people think that the future of medicine will involve utilising robots like this for routine surgical procedures. Having seen this, I just hope I never have to come under the knife. <laughs> I like his scrubs and his little theatre hat. I'm mentioning the FDA. What's that? Oh, God, a straight stab through to the throat, which would lead to a quick death. Now, there's only really one indication for a procedure that looks a bit like this, called a cricothyroidectomy. And this is where you might have seen someone use a biro to go into the throat to help someone breathe. And the only real reason you do this is in an emergency if someone has a completely blocked airway. Mind you, don't try this at home. <laughs> so Hitman likes to do a little bit of yoga uh, to relax. I don't know why, I just want to kick her off. Here we go. Oh, nice! This is Sparta! This is Sparta! Not as clinical as some of his other kills, but still as clever. But there must be something in that where you want to push somebody, for example, into a swimming pool if they're standing on the edge. Am I the only one? <laughs> just hanging out, hanging on the balcony. What's, this? What's he gonna do? Oh god, and then pulled over the edge. Now, it doesn't really look that high where she's fallen from, maybe 30 feet or so. And remember we've spoken about how there's a 50% chance of survival from falling from 50 foot. So the hitman could have probably done a little bit better with this kill. Okay, he's dressed as a ninja. Oh, straight through the mouth. That would have transected the base of the brain and spinal cord. Now, don't forget that at the base of the brain, you've got what's called the brain stem, which controls all of your vital functions like breathing. And so a slash at this point would really be looking at an instant kill and brainstem death. Oh, what a clinical headshot. And I like how he tries not to look guilty, just turning his back to what's happened. I mean, how did he even get that gun into there? It's not like these scrubs have lots of pockets to hide them in. 
Oh god, vomiting. No, he's not gonna. Oh god, drowning in her, in her own vomit. What a horrible way to go. Goodness me. In a toilet. Now the mechanism of drowning is quite interesting and you can actually drown in very shallow water. One mechanism is where you take an involuntary breath, bringing water into your lungs, which acts as an obstruction to your airways and closes it off. The other mechanism is through laryngospasm, where the vocal cords go into spasm and close off your airway, which is seen in many drowning instances where people have tried to hold their breath underwater. Oh no, is that a great press? I think I can see what's going to happen here. Oh no, no! God! Oh no. Now I understand when people describe wine as full-bodied and full of flavour. I just didn't realise they meant literally. <laughs> I like how you're given the option to kick a toilet. Oh no! A toilet straight to the head! And if anyone's ever tried lifting one of those, they weigh between 20 to 30 kilos. Now falling from that height and landing straight on your head is definitely going to cause some blunt force trauma, possibly fracturing the skull, leading to bleeding on the brain. But let me know down below what you guys would put on his death certificate. Can you <laughs> Seeing a fortune teller. Okay, what's this? For a, <laughs> for a second there, I didn't know which one was the hitman. But a close look in the crystal ball, and once again it's blunt force trauma to the head. Now taking a blow to the side of the head, you have a specific weak point, where several skull bones converge on an area called the baterion. Now the significance of this is that if this is struck, you have the greatest risk of suffering from a skull fracture and an underlying bleed that extends onto the brain. I'll do my own fortune telling here, this guy's not going to make it. Death through crystal ball. <laughs> the hitman here is dressed like Pitbull or Andrew Tate. Oh god! And the irony is he never saw it coming. Now is there any way of surviving an injury like this? Well if by some miracle the bullet missed every vital structure in the brain then definitely, but by the way that he's fell, he's not getting back up. <laughs> I can see where they're going with this. Given the option to subdue or kill with a pen, I think he's definitely going to John Wick it. Oh, a <laughs> knife wound straight to the eye. Now looking at the depth to which that pen went through the eye, it's definitely penetrated through the orbit and hit the brain, leading to brain damage and death. Had it been a smaller pen, he may have survived, minus an eye. Serves him right for leaving a pen erect on a table like that. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why on earth would you pull an ejector seat? Having said that, I know that there are parachutes situated in these, so there's a chance of surviving this. In fact, the world record for surviving from a fall from height is held by a flight attendant. Her name was Vesna Volovic, and she fell from a height of 33,000 feet. Granted, she had multiple fractures, but she was able to walk away from it after several months. Oh god, this guy's definitely got more disguises than Johnny Sins. Oh, and then straight onto the spike. Goodness me, shish kebabbed. And this guy's been completely impaled on that. You'd expect a dissection of his aorta, and he'd likely die instantly from blood loss. At least it's at the hands of a man of God. <laughs> he looks just like Andrew Tate there. And he's just standing around. Oh, kaboom! Bang! He was waiting for that. Target down. Now, gas leaks aren't only dangerous because of their potential for an explosion, there's also a risk of carbon monoxide poisoning, which, ca which can be just as lethal. And carbon monoxide gas is so harmful because it's got the ability to displace oxygen from your red blood cells. I've treated a few cases of this, and really the only way to treat it is by giving people high concentrations of oxygen to help push out the carbon monoxide again. However, this lady is likely to have died from the explosive impact itself. Okay, so it looks like we're in the morgue. Oh, and an axe straight to the throat. Oh, and they're one to the skull. Goodness me. I guess he could just throw them in with the rest of the bodies and hope no one notices. Japanese doctor. <laughs> oh, that's what you get for criticizing Japanese doctors. God. Oh, no, and then straight to the heart. Goodness, he's not getting up from that. To be honest, had he left the scissors in place, the victim might have lasted a bit longer, but as soon as he pulls him out, that's it. It's a death sentence. He's going to start hemorrhaging out. But to be honest, taking a stab wound directly to the heart is likely going to disrupt the electrical signals that allows your heart to contract, meaning that you're likely going to die from an arrhythmia before blood loss. Hey, oh god, he's back down in the morgue again. With you right hey, now. Oh, straight to the head. God, a kick to the face. Oh, then directly to the chest. 
Now, to be honest, I hate the morgue. I find it so spooky. And there's another reason for me to keep away from it. Axe-wielding murderers. But don't let that put you off pursuing it as a profession. I hear they have multiple vacancies. And two more have just opened up. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you like this sort of stuff, I've done a similar video on the cyberpunk universe. Why not check that one out? Otherwise, if you have any other video game recommendations, why not leave those down in the comments and I'll try and take a look. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks.